Our show today on Sport Fishing on the Fly is our 100th episode, and we thought a return to Premier Lake was fitting for this milestone. Our original show on Premier was one of our earliest, and it was one that a lot of people remembered, so we thought we'd go back to see how the lake was doing. Kelly Latch of the St. Mary Angler and Fly Shop was instrumental in helping to get sport fishing on the fly off the ground back in 1992, so again it seemed fitting to do our 100th episode with Kelly. It's our return to Premier Lake, today on Sport Fishing on the Fly. Yeah, I saw oh, that. Oh, there's a little aerial. We're having some wind trip. problems here today. The wind is just howling huge. Wind problems? Well, you know what? The wind, like you said, was howling. Now yeah. it's died off to a dull roar. Yeah. It's still blowing pretty good. It's still blowing pretty good. All he needs is a couple minutes of calm. So you, you go right to the back of the boat, worked right off. Like you always talk about when you're crawling mid fishing, get that line straight out. And that's what you did. You're able to actually keep it that way for a couple of minutes for a little bit of retrieve and you're able to hook up. It was, that, was, and that was exactly it. I got it in there, got it in straight into shore, which is nice finally. Kept my line straight and that chrono mid was moving normally. It wasn't going 100 <laughs> miles an hour with the wind one way or another. I got it straight down wind. And as always, we're using the barbell socks. Whoa, get them in our catch and release net here. There he is. Now here's a good example of what not to stomach pump. Here's a, our throat pump. Here's a nice little guy. Top lip. Just unhook it. Now it's a fairly small fish. That fish isn't any more than 12 inches long. I'm not even going to touch him. I'm just, he's in the catch and release net. We're not going to do a throw sample because he is fairly small. And that's all he needs. Just a quick little release like that and he's going to go right away and you're not going to hurt him. Yeah. <laughs> it is. We're, we're just making the move in. I think we need to be a little closer to shore. So put the rod down, and my rod starts dancing. Good thing I didn't lose it. So you ever put your rod down, make sure you hook it up, <laughs> which yeah. I did. Good thing. That would not have been a good thing. <laughs> no. That's a nice one, too. Oh, yeah, he's got a little, a little weight to him. So obviously, this fish here was nothing at all about retrieve. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. There's no retrieve at all happening. It was just sitting there. So I guess yeah, we moved into a good location. That's a lot of times where you get them. Yeah. Especially when you're fishing carotomids. Or what do you have on now? I've got on a beadhead mayfly. Beadhead may. Yeah. Again, well, very still. Remember, we, if you saw the show from, was it four years ago when we were here last time? Yeah. It was the exact same fly that we used four years ago. And it's still a very productive fly here. I'm running about 17 feet a liter, so it's going to be hard to, to get this guy in here. Got him there? Right on. OK. Yeah, not a bad fish. Oh, sure we should do is, yeah, we were talking about that Rio Aqualux line. And, right. And that was a very nice line when you want to get down a little deeper, we're a little more stealthy. Yeah. Line. And that's only an intermediate sink one, isn't it? That's right. So uh, it's supposed to sink very slowly. It does sink a little faster than some of the others yeah. in, the, in the clear line series. But um, other than that, it's, it's very good. It, it's really stealthy. And as you can see, we've tucked ourselves in this nice little bay, the only calm part of the lake, out in the main water. It's just blowing. It's all white caps, and this is the only area. Kelly says it can be hit and missing here, but hey, we hit. We hit. <laughs> First <laughs> cast. That's right. So what we should do, too, is tell everybody about the, the setup we're using. We've got the Marriott rods today. Right. And what do you have? What do we give you to use? Um, I'm using the Marriott three-piece five-weight Evolution, which is, uh, which is a great rod. And this is their, their high-performance graphite rod. Okay. Uh, very powerful for a five-weight. Yeah, and I've got a little four-piece packer. Yeah. The five-weight, and it casts like a dream, yeah. too. Sweet rod, yeah. and it packs up into nothing. A nice little case, about a couple feet long. It's just beautiful. Well, why don't we release well, that guy? Let's get down. You want to and grab release the net? That. Sure. All right. Get that there. There he is. There he is. Good job. Let me just unhook him here. If I can 
get that wireless hooks as always. There it is. And here he is. He's a nice little guy. Nothing, nothing huge, but quite a pretty fish. Very nice. Nice little guy. Get him back in the water. And he's ready to go. Oh, there he goes. Good job, Don. All right. Well, wow. active fish. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> Finally. Oh, it's been it's been frustrating here because we've been changed over to the Aqualux line, which is good. Seems to get the, the fly down to where you need to go. The beadhead mayfly was working good, but they were just short striking it. It was like every second or third retrieve, you're getting hits on it. But you couldn't hook up. How many have we lost? A lot. And being the boathead I am, I haven't changed from the Aqualux. I stayed with the drive, but I've been having the action because I put a little uh, little weight, a little soft putty on my fly, so help it get down. I changed it up. I put on an ostrich churl mayfly. Don was pulling out the uh, chronomids earlier, all dark, so I picked a, actually a dark brown ostrich churl mayfly, and that's the second cast with it. So that's maybe we get down here and see if we can unhook this guy. He's not very big at all. So I'll just see if I can reach down and pop that fly out of there. There he goes. Right on. Just like that. There's the ostrich churl mayfly. Ron Rao of Little Fort Flying Tackle showed us that fly a couple years ago. Yeah. That's what I pulled out. He kind of trashed it. Well, you know what we should do? Let's talk a little bit about Premier Lake. Yeah. How they've managed it. You know, they've done a great job of management out here because they have some nice spawning channels. I know they put one up at the far end by the provincial park. We're not allowed to show it, so we can't actually film the spawning ground. Right. But they've done a fantastic job up in there. They've done a real nice job with the park right. area. They yeah. come in there. Yep. And what else do they have in here? Well, they got the provincial park. You know, there's actually a couple other lakes that are within the park here. There's Yankee, there's Canuck, there's Quartz, right. which are all really good lakes. They actually take a lot of the spawning fish out of here and they put them up into these other lakes. Well, how come we haven't gone up there? <laughs> well, because, well, we can't well, film we up why. there because it's within a provincial park. That's right. Unless we go and get the permits. Yeah. We can't do that, so that's why we stick to Premier Lake. But hey, there's three other good lakes to come and fish if you ever yeah. come to Premier Lake. They got, the, they can say, the campground, provincial campgrounds up there. A nice little kids' park. It's perfect for the kids to be around. Yeah. yeah they got it all, and you can watch the fish spawn. That's a neat thing. It's going up the creek and seeing all the fish. They have beautiful spawning channels, seeing all the fish spawning. Yeah, which we could show because it is really neat. Yeah. Yeah, if you come here in May up to about the middle of June, you're going to see that. But I want to catch a fish. I haven't had much luck hanging on to them either. No, that's why I finally switched it up. I was, I was so frustrated. Show. The beadhead mayfly, they just like they're just picking at yeah. it. I don't know. And it was different because you strip it, you let it sit, and it's almost like when you're letting it sit and it's floating back down. That's when they're right. kind of maybe bumping it a little bit. It. Yeah, having a look at it or yeah. something swimming by. Yeah. I'll keep working that. If you have some more luck, I might have to change. I have. I still haven't even changed from dry line. I'm still with the dry <laughs> line. I'm a diehard dry guy, so maybe I'll change after. Well, this week on the bench, we're going to tie you up the Maycron nymph. It's actually a combination mayfly nymph and chronomid. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we're going to use the size 12 TMC 2487. We'll use some 8-odd-all thread to tie with. 
a 1 8 gold bead for the head, some small copper wire for the rib, some black stretch flex for the body, some white mallard for the tail, and some white mallard for the wing. To start the fly off, I've actually put my 1 8 bead onto the hook, and I'm just going to tie in my thread and wrap it to the back of the hook we're going to put the tail on. To tie in the tail, I've taken some mallard, and I'm going to measure up that mallard as long as the hook is. Take it back and tie it in for the tail. For the ribbing, I'm going to take some small copper wire and wrap it in, and we'll rib up the body later. For the body, I'm going to use this new material in the market, and it's called Stretch Flex, and it's really flexible material. It's excellent for tying crown mid bodies. So I'm going to tie it in, and I'm going to pull it quite hard to keep it fully stretched so it goes on nice and thin. Now I'm going to take the stretch flex and wind it forward to form the body. And as I pull the stretch flex, it keeps that body nice and thin, just like chronomids and mayflies have. The body's tied in. We're going to take our ribbing, that's our fine copper wire, and I'm going to take about five to six ribs. For the last step in the fly, I've taken some more mallard feathers, and what I'm going to do now is push my bead back, wrap my thread in front of the bead, get to the eyelet of the hook, and we're going to tie that feather in about as long as the body. We made the body fairly short. I'm just going to tie in a small piece of mallard right in front of the bead. And you want that to stick up nicely. Well, there it is, the finished May Coron Nymph. You know, it's very similar to a pattern that we tie. It's called the beadhead mayfly, and we use pheasant tail for that fly. The nice thing about this one is the nice stretch flex body, keeping it fairly thin profile in the water, and that extra long tail allows you to fish this fly with a lot quicker retrieve. Oh, there's a nice little guy. I'm watching. Another nice one. Whoa, whoa. Gotta watch the anchor lines, too. I'll bring this guy up and we'll have to get him on the reel, I don't think. He's not that big. And that was on the mayfly. Actually a skip nymph, one of Skip Morris's flies. Which is quite a good little pattern for mayfly nymphs. We had a lot of mayflies coming off today. But we've gone through everything. We've gone through the chronomids. Oh, and he got off. Long line release. That's just the perfect way. And here's a fly. Show everybody. That's a little skip nymph. And it is a good, real nice mayfly nymph pattern. Right there, works really well. Just fishing like chronomid again, real slow. I got it on a dry line. I've got about 20 feet out that I was using for my chronomid pattern. And I've got a tippet up. That's about a foot and a half up the leader. And I've got a little bit of this putty, this deep lead putty. Just, just enough to get that fly down and help it. And then on my tippet, on the very end, I've got the fly. What you got there, Cal? I got a nice little silver trout. Oh, bad attitude. Even changing it up, we've all been, uh, it's actually getting a little bit later on the day now. We've, been, we've all been changing it up. We really have, eh? We've really, we've had to, we've been getting a lot of bumps on everything, but not yeah. really taking any fish in it. I finally went back to an old standby, a, a Doc Spratley on the, oh, right on. on the, the uh, slime line, and it's been working really good. Well, Immediate sinking, eh? I made the switch over, I went back to the dry line, trying coronamids again, but no luck. I had on, you know what I had on a couple bumps was the baby leech. And that's, you know, that's probably a good plan. You can even put a baby leech on using a chronomid style too, you know. I could, I might just have to do good. that, yeah. yeah. That's a nice size fish. Not a bad little guy. Okay, got the tools here, maybe we'll do it. Um, what do you think about throat sampling this guy? What do you think about the size of him? Um, right on the line. One of the things we haven't caught a fish for quite a while, we'd like to throat sample him, but you know what? This guy is just uh, too small. That's a nice, oh, the head shake, you like the head shakes. Usually means a little bigger fish when they're shaking their head like that. Uh, it looks like about the same size. And you know, we were talking about it, Kelly, we've missed a lot of fish today. We really have. Because we've been trying to set really fast, really quickly, but what we found here later in the day, it doesn't take us long, <laughs> is uh, let them take it. And that's what we've been doing. You feel them and they kind of just been pecking out a little bit, just let them take it and then just slowly lift up. 
and that's that's how we've been getting them so it seems to be working and coming straight up too i retrieved right in cast into shore retrieved right to us pulling it straight up and that's that's when it hit and that's when we've had most of our hits today yeah this is a nice size oh, fish. that's a better fish yeah yep that's a nice fish yeah that's a good one let me do the net thing for you grant yeah all right that would be really good I think just about ready yeah yeah, that's the best feeling in the world when they start shaking their heads like that because you know there's a little bit more to them. Rather than the flutter, you hit the flutter, they're pretty small when they start fluttering at you. Well, I think he's just about ready there, Cal. Okay. I think. Of course, soon as you say that, it starts to take off again. There we go. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. I what I like to do is I like to turn them upside down if I can, like so. Getting disoriented. Yep. Okay, he's he's in pretty good shape. You notice if you keep him upside down when you do that, when you take that fly out, it really disorientates him. Yep. But if I move this, watch what happens the second I turn him over. There you go. See, normally they're not used to being upside down at all. In fact, right. they almost never go upside down. Yeah. So if you can flip them upside down to remove that hook, it'll really calm them down quite a bit. And it uh, makes it much, much easier to handling those fish like that. Good. So, yeah. Good tip for you. There you fish go. Fish are coming back on. You bet. Yeah, it might be good. Well, I think we might catch a few. Yeah, don't go away. Yeah. We're going to be right back. God, that was a crush. Little guy again. What a hit. So back on the beadhead mayfly. Yeah. Back onto him again. Isn't that unreal? It's amazing. So you went from oh, the, the nicer. There you go. That's a nicer fish. The Doc Spratly back to the beadhead mayfly. Yeah. Playing with all kinds of stuff here. Whoa. Oh, we're starting to see more coronaments coming oh, off. Oh, double header. Cat is there coming off. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> Danny. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> right oh, at right it. by the boat. What? Oh, look at the air <laughs> time. Air time. Unreal. Oh, fantastic. Oh, look at him going. Man. Oh, this is a nice fish. Wow. Yeah, this will do. Oh, That's more like a premier fish. Holy Come cow. on, Granny, triple it up. Whoa. That's the nice thing about hooking them up and Panask Rainbow. They're just the best. Panask take to the air right away. Fantastic fish. How you doing with yours back there, Kel? <laughs> I think Kelly's is almost ready here. Yep. All right, well, I'll Go back to Kelly's. I'll bring mine back, and we'll I'll be the guy in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Do that, or oh, that's a hot fish. <laughs> it is a hot fish. You can just hand me that net if you want, Grant. I, I could. I could reel up here and. Uh, you want to do the honors? Well, I'll get out of the road. Is what I'll do. <laughs> Let you guys land your fish. <laughs> that's been a good day of fishing, though. Yeah, it really has. All right. Don't Go worry, buddy. I'll get Randy. my own. You're gonna do yours, okay? I'll do my own. I think I released. Up. Look at that. Don't you love catch and release? Oh. Barbless hooks. This guy, he'll be ready to go here, is he? Yeah, off well, he goes. Here, now I'll let you do mine. There's one. Actually, he just... Uh, I love this net. This is a net that Bill Hamlin made for yeah, last year. Yeah, that's a nice one, yeah. This guy is pulse hooked. Look at that. Yeah. He is oh, shook it. Oh, yeah. Must have shook it on a jump. Maybe, because he was in the mouth. Uh, he yeah. was in the mouth, yeah, when he took oh, it. Oh, he's a nice one, too. Oh, yeah. Good jumper. Nice fish. Yeah, I must have re hooked him when he took look the air, too. Are, aren't they oh, they're oh. really in fine condition. They, they really are. Let me get this guy. He's a little tougher to get up because he is false hooked now. Get him in there. There we go. Yeah. Got him. All right. Hook him there. Pop out. Pop out. Yeah, it's out already. Yeah. Hi. Changed it up, did you? Little me flying nymph on there. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna get ready to go. Yeah, he's pretty fat, isn't he? Oh, very healthy here. Yeah. Chubby guy. There he goes. Right there on. Oh, no, that was bad, an excellent day. Bad. Yeah. Go kill. on down, kill. Okay. We got more stuff here than we know what to do with. Yeah, we do. Don't we got what? We still got a line in the water. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> all right. Still fishing. Thanks a lot. That well, thank you. That was great. Day. Yeah, we yeah. had a lot of fun out here today. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Yeah. It's always great to work with you guys. Well, and it's a great fishery here. It's well managed. And, you know, it's yeah. come back and it's, it's just awesome.
great place to come. Yeah. And the other thing is a big lake. There's lots of fish in here, so it's a good place for everybody to come. We're not going to get in trouble for naming Premier Lake. No. It's a, you know, it's almost two miles long. It's, uh, it's got lots of room. It really doesn't get fished that heavily. And they put 65,000 oh, fish yeah. in every year, yeah. specifically for fishermen to, to fish it. To fish it, yeah, exactly. And we didn't get any of the big guys today like we have in the past here, but still some pretty nice fish. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree, really nice fish. Yeah. Uh, real thick, chrome bright, a lot of them, a couple spawners, but they were yep. bigger fish. Yeah, bigger fish. That yeah. was kind of nice to see. Yeah. And uh, overall, pretty good day. We didn't get a brookie, but we've got to keep working oh, on yeah. it, I guess. Yeah, you bet. We'll be back again. You bet. Right on. Thanks again, Cal. You're welcome. You get a chance to come to Premier Lake, make sure you take care. And conserve the waters. Do a great job in the fishery here, and it shows it's got plenty of nice fish. This is a first-class fishery. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. And we take you sport fishing on the fly.